Let's now talk about uh, the inflation figure recently released. The Nigerian economy has been grappling with rising inflation rates in recent months and the latest April inflation report brings with it significant implications for the country's financial landscape. With a surge in the inflation rate to a staggering 22.22%, Nigeria finds itself confronted with mounting challenges that demand urgent attention and strategic measures. Inflation has been a persistent problem for Nigeria in recent years, driven by factors such as food and fuel prices, currency devaluation, and security concerns. As policymakers grapple with how to address this issue, uh, we'll take a look at the implications of this alarming rise in inflation and explore the potential consequences for the Nigerian economy, its citizens, and the overall business environment. And joining us to do this is uh, Mr. Abdulaziz Kuranga, a, micro, a macroeconomic strategist, and he joins us virtually. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Good morning, Mwabula. Thanks for having me. It looks like this isn't coming as a surprise to many analysts because there have been predictions before now that the March figure, which was put at 22.04, was going to surge uh, this uh, particular uh, in the month of April. But did you see this? amount of increase in the figure um yes it's not um really surprising seeing the inflation rate increasing by 18 bits to 22.22 um, percent in april compared to the 22.04 percent that we saw in march and that is because if you notice um the period of um april was when we had um easter and was also when we had the ramadan celebrations so all those Easter and Ramadan um, celebrations to constitute uh, what we usually call the festive induced demand. So demand usually increases during um, festive periods. So in line with that increase in demand, however, um, supply remains um, constrained, and that is because um, cultivation recently in farming um, activities, accord according to our interns, we're saying that um, those cultivations they were significantly below um, below average. So and also, whenever you are cultivating, it means um, that cultivation period is also not a um, average period. So since it is not a average period, it means that majority of what you are still consuming now, and um, they are coming from the primary average season from last year. And you know that uh, from the primary average season of last year, there were floods and the likes. And also, some also coming from the off-season harvest of um, it, particularly in the southern part of the region. So given um, the low food supply, um, in conjunction with the significant increase in demand, which was worsened by the um, festive induced um, season. So we saw um, food prices continue to increase, um, food prices continue to break um, record highs. And also, um, about, apart from, from that, um, during that month also, we see that um, cost pressures continue um, to remain intact um, during that um, period of time. So as a result, that's why we're seeing the year on year inflation increasing significantly to like the highest point since at least um 2004. Mm -hmm. so all those factors increase in demand um cost push remains intact and legacy factors remain intact so and they made it not surprising to see the inflation rate um edging um to a new record high of um 22.2 percent as of april Mm. But if you look at all of these factors you may mentioned, uh, one would expect that there should be a, a little slowdown, maybe not as much, but uh, slower than what we saw in the past years because of the cash crunch that happened earlier in the year. Do, do you see it in that light? Um, not really in that light. And that's because this cash crunch that we're even talking about, what is the percentage of um, cash to total money supply? Um, it's less than 10%. Um, so I don't really uh, see it in that light. So where um, the majority of the issue is usually coming from, particularly for Nigeria, is in the cost um, aspect of things. But on the citizens' demand aspect of things, it is largely contained because um, in the first instance, the analysis that um, cash in circulation is inducing inflation, um, that analysis is unfounded, um, given that um, the cash outside the banking system as a percentage of money supply is around 6%, also less than 10% majorly. So that's not really a problem. Where uh, the majority of the problem has been um, over the 
since the beginning of the year, which have been in line with the intermittent increase in the transport cost as a result of um, PMS um, price increases, then mm. food supplies, low food supplies, and um, currency pressures, as well as infrastructure issues and low um, productivity. Well, let's assess the impact of all of this on the purchasing power of the average Nigerian. Uh, immediately, whenever prices continue to increase like that, so it means that consumer wallets will be squeezing, and that means purchasing power will be reducing. So, um, given that um, wages are more or less um, constant, while prices continue to increase, so it means that you will now be using um, a lot of money to be purchasing the same amount of um, goods whenever um, prior to when there is an increase in inflation. So, that means you will now be taking out of your savings that's if you have savings before and if mm. you don't have savings before savings rates will actually be reducing because you need to be spending more out of your limited income and apart from that economy also slows given that um consumers they constitute about 60 to 70 percent of an economy if inflation continues to increase um consumer spending will be slowing and if consumer spending is slowing it will be having an overall impact on, on goods and if that is the case businesses will also be feeling this impact in the form of low investments and also low demand for their products and that will be affecting their top and bottom line and as one of the things that we usually do with increases in inflation rates that's when we have the same increases in interest rates also and the growing costs continue to increase that will also be having another round um round effects on, on the overall economy but it looks like that increase in interest rates, which we see as the consistent move of the CBN, isn't really reduced in the uh, inflation figure. Because uh, they, every time the NPC meeting holds, we hear of uh, an increase in the interest rate. But it's not looking like that is effective, especially seeing that the kind of inflation Nigeria is experiencing is a cost-push inflation. Exactly. So that's um that's majorly um the the reason why we've not really seen um the impact of um these increases in monetary policy rates on prices. And that's because um this transmission channel has been broken and majority of um what Nigeria is currently experiencing is from the um cost push um aspects, that is the supply side of the, um aspect and that is where we'll be looking at transport costs which we've seen um pms prices um increasing and we've also seen pms supply um reducing so during periods of scarcity you will just be seen everywhere um prices will be rising if you market to man if you want to buy something and they increase the price for you if you tell them why they will just tell you that don't you know that um for um for cost has risen so all those mm -hmm. kind of things same for four costs and uh, also for currency pressures. Even things that are not even related to these things, they will just attribute them to to the four cost currency issues and you see prices continue to increase. So um the fact that um the signal continues to increase in interest rate and inflation continues to inflation continues to rise is like a testament um, to it that um uh, money supply or demand side um, aspects the they are not really those they are not really the predominant factors that are affecting inflation and that is why it is appearing that um, the NPR has not been effective. So perhaps if the fiscal authorities can stand up um, to their to their jobs, to their functions um, of attacking the supply side aspects, then um, we'll be seeing the impact of rising rates on, on inflation rates. But uh, what we have now is the CBN trying to solve both demand and supply side factors together, which, which should not be the case. So the majority of what the CBN does is to actually uh, constrain the demand side aspects, so while the fiscal authorities are the ones that have uh, much power to control the supply side aspects in order to bring down inflation rates.